I have no audio. Yes, you do. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> That's exciting. I have audio. It's been a long day. Amen, sister. That keeps going. Yeah. My husband has in like a week. I just sent him out to Dunkin' Donuts to get coffee. Please leave. I'm sorry, what was that? Then my husband hasn't left the house in like a week. So I just sent him out to get Dunkin' Donuts coffee. You leave. <laughs> you need to you need to just get up and go somewhere. He worked until 3 a.m. I understand how that can happen. I know. That's part of the issue of, of COVID is just there's the boundaries, just mush. You know, and you know what? Of, of the many things that I miss about my 26, now 27 year old daughter moving back into the city in September is that she has stopped. There's nobody to blast me out of my chair to go for a walk. Right. No one holds you accountable. Like you have to get up. You need to have a life. Mm -hmm. Yep. Patty feels it. I do. It's very nice to meet you. Hi. And Pam, obviously. But. <laughs> and then Debbie, you're in the dark. Um, I am in the dark. I will light myself up in a sec. <laughs> That's fine. I just didn't know if you were sitting in the dark or if you just like oh, no. <laughs> I hear something ever since I learned that Jewish joke. I do not sit in the dark. Oh, that's hysterical. <laughs> I don't know the Jewish joke. Oh. Um, I believe the joke is how many Jewish mothers does it take to screw in a light bulb? Answer? None. It's okay. I'll just sit in the dark. <laughs> it's just, it's just <laughs> I just felt my mother-in-law very hard right there. <laughs> that was good. Tony would be laughing, but he's on mute. And dark. <laughs> this camera's off. You just, I think you had your lens on your camera. Do you have a, like a lens cap? Me? Yeah, I do. That's what you had. I was one. laughing. I was laughing. That's a good one. <laughs> hey, good. Hello, Hello, everyone. Let me give you How some you? joy. How's everyone feeling? Well, thank you. Thanks for asking. Getting ready for the holidays. I have a tree that needs to get decorated. Other than that, I, I'll be ready soon enough. I have I to hit the attic. The snow today. The snow was really, uh, it was nice to see. Isn't that, a, with the possible exception that I don't know that I've been that cold in a very long time. I yeah. was, uh, I had to do a quick meeting at uh, Crawford and I put on my shearling coat and it wasn't nearly enough. I was freezing. Uh, Pam, my other team members, Stephanie just joined us. Stephanie, Tim Austin, I don't know if she can hear us yet, but Stephanie, Stephanie. is the uh, full-time court clerk for the village of Pleasantville. She and I worked together for many years. She's uh, extremely talented and um, uh, extremely good at what she does and has a great network uh, availing uh, us to lots of talent and uh, advice. So Stephanie, welcome. Can you hear me? Fabulous. I don't think I can yet. Sorry, I had to update my description. Otherwise, Jeffrey will yap at me when he gets on that I don't say who I am there. He will direct message us if we don't identify. Oh, come on. <laughs> Not kidding. Like, look at Jill. She's well trained. It's so easy to change who you are, too. It's fun. Zoom is well, it's, it's always fun to get onto like a church council meeting or a like work meeting with an author and it's like Pam Jaffe council person they're like ooh you're official <laughs> different person okay oh, no. <laughs> it's true. must be different now well it's a tough time of year I mean it, with all the other pressures at the end of the year and now you're in budget and you know but once you're over this hurdle you know, you're a little easier right hopefully that was, that was quite a document. My eyes kind of crossed. Oh, the thing I'm working on with Stephanie? 
Yeah, yeah. We're, 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 those are all our thoughts. You know, those are pen to paper thoughts right now. We're, we're trying to be thorough. And we have a lot of facts, you know, to digest. So once we can digest those, you know, those facts and figures and make sense of it, you know, we can come up with a pretty good idea of what we're going to be looking at as a consolidated court. So, you know, it's, um, uh, I have a little bit of an advantage. I worked on the other project for Portchester. So, you know, I was pretty familiar with what the expectations were on that end of the dissolution. So um, I had some of this data available. It's eye-opening. It is. It is. Yeah, it is. It's an extremely, they were extremely efficient operation, you know, and it was a profitable operation for the village. Nonetheless, even with all that overhead, uh, they still, they still walked away with, uh, uh, you know, some uh, positive revenue. So um, mm -hmm. different story for a town that doesn't have law enforcement agencies working, you know, on its behalf and doesn't really have, you know, the benefit of some of those other activities. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll go through, we'll walk through it. The, the, uh, the email that I got, um, just wanna make sure I'm looking at the most recent. I would look at a version four. Do you have version four? I, I added in that page that the supervisor said he wanted to see another budget and um, it had just one correction in it, but I can circulate that while we're on the phone, while we're on Zoom if you want and you could- Is it, uh, labeled, is it labeled TOR Justice Court Breakout with recommended budget? That is just, um, that's just one Excel sheet. That just shows you what this, what you suggested the supervisor wanted to see tonight. I created the co the column for the uh, recommended budget, but then I imported all of that into the uh, report, into the ver into the uh, draft. Okay. You should have a version four. Yeah, I, I there definitely was. Was that forwarded? And by the time we're done, you know, hopefully. I don't know. I think I just sent it to you and to uh, Sarah Suma. Okay. Sarah sent something around at 422. That could be it. Let's see. Let's it was see. just an Excel spreadsheet. Okay. So she didn't send the other report. Uh, okay. So I'm looking at SMS Rev 4. Is that correct? correct. Okay. Got it. Page 10 there. That's the, uh, that's the, that's the Excel spreadsheet that um, Sarah sent around. Okay, right down part, Tony Provenzano, Jerome Colangelo. You know, it's a work in progress. That'll that that that's basically the template for the report that we uh we'd like to pull together by mid-January. So, you know, we can start then working on your implementation strategy. It's one thing to do the planning, the implementing is a whole nother story, you know. Yes. But we'll we'll be at the midpoint in uh, where we want to be in January and then we'll, we'll uh, We'll revisit. Okay, I'm I'm send, uh, uh, Pam. I'm sending that to you. Hi, Kathy Hi. and Jill. Hi. Hello. So, um, I will. I've I've already enabled you to share your screen, uh, Patty's. Uh, but I also will have it on my okay. computer so that. Um, I can share my screen. Okay, great. Now I saw Stephanie, I think she disappeared. So I'm gonna send her a little text, maybe having trouble. Oh, okay. How was your day otherwise, Debbie? Pretty busy today, huh? Today was a pretty busy day. Um, yes, it was a good day. Good. But, uh, lots of... Kind of cheek to jail meetings. <laughs> um, and I think I found a new eye doctor. Oh, there you <laughs> go. Yeah, I'm disappointed. I didn't go this year, so I'm going to forfeit my free glasses. <laughs> I, have no, I can't get an appointment in. Oh, goodness. So much for retirement, right? I think I'd have time to do all these things for myself and I forgot to get to the eye doctor this year. It's not too late. Who's your new eye doctor, Debbie? 
My new eye doctor is named Litzy, Jacqueline Litzy. Where's his, where's his uh, office? Uh, the closest one is Greenwich. Oh, and then man. she goes north from there. She's got other, other uh, offices further north in Connecticut, but uh, mm -hmm. Greenwich was seven minutes away. That worked for me. Right. And, uh, um, you know, I, I was with a practice where I felt like a number that kept getting forgotten. So I actually ran out of medication for a full month because I started several months in advance to say, I'm about to run out. I need to be renewed. And after you know, a half a dozen phone calls and emails, I just gave up. Right. Not in right. practice. Well, when they sell when they sell glasses too, a lot of times it, it becomes that becomes more of the business than being you know obstetrician. So I you know I I don't know. Uh, we've got uh, two. We've got uh, we have three. Who's the third? I Jill. Oh, Jill, 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 you're 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 not your your picture's not there, Jill. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, hello. Sorry, having some trouble. <laughs> back. That's okay. fine. Who's two o three three? Who's two o three? I think that's Victoria. Is oh, that Victoria. you, Victoria? Can I? Huh? I don't know if they can hear me. Hello. 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 Victoria, are you two o three five two zero seven zero five one? If you can hear me, yes. <laughs> I don't know if you yes, can. Yes, you are. Oh yeah, we, we hear you now. Okay, great. Yeah. No, we don't have yeah, Tommy. I'm on my phone. We have Tony. Be here. No, Tommy, Tommy. No, Tommy, you don't have Tommy, no. All right. Tommy Listen, I don't think to be late. I thought I saw. Tommy's gonna be late. I I don't know where Lindsay is. You wanna text her, uh, Debbie? Yes. I think um <clears throat> Debbie, are you administrating the meeting? I'm host. All right, I, th I think your clerk also. That, that's true. Um, but give me a second to get a hold of Lindsay. I don't, I think that, uh, I seem to recall Hope asking if she had to be here tonight. And I said, no, without thinking that it's really, it's a public meeting and she's the clerk, but <laughs> we can handle it. <laughs> well, this is being recorded and we have the, uh, the media with us. So let's start properly with the pledge. You got the flag? Yes. Do you want me to call Lindsay first before we say the pledge? Text Lindsay and let's do the pledge. I, I don't think she'll be upset about missing the pledge. Okay. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. America. and to the Republic, to the Republic of which it stands, which it stands, one, one, one nation, nation, under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and justice for all. Jill, you and I really have to think of that one. <laughs> all right. Um, welcome, everybody, to the uh, special meeting of the Rye Town Council of December 9th, 2020. This is a budget meeting. It's a public meeting. Uh, we will go into executive session to discuss specific personnel items when we get to that point. Uh, right now we are concentrating on the proposed <laughs> budget justice court. Um, Debbie, you want to well, I'll note, let me note for the record that we have a quorum with Jill Axelrod, Pam Jaffe, and uh, myself in attendance. Um, Tom Nardi uh, will probably be joining us later, and Lindsay is probably on her way. Um, also uh, with us, yes, Debbie? Sorry, I, I, you were still making introductions by your partner. Okay. Uh, Judge Anthony Provenzano is with us. Dave Burns, our controller. Uh, Patty Dwyer, our court consultant. Stephanie, I'm sorry, I don't remember your last name. Tim Austin. Tim Austin. Yes, Stephanie, who works um, 
with with Patty um, as our core consultant, uh, Kathy Hamill, our uh, of our accounting team. And I know she hasn't shown herself, but our uh, valiant town reporter, Victoria Bresnahan, is with us too. Yes. So, uh, I think uh, we have a 2021 preliminary budget. And Patty, I think that it'd probably be best for you to take us through it, what you've seen. Sure, be happy And to. what your recommendations are. All right. In, in terms of an order of things, I have a few very quick um, items with regard to Crawford <clears throat> Park. Do you want to do those first or last before we go into executive session? Well, executive session is for personnel. Is, do you want Not to do? Now. Do you do you want to um, talk about Crawford? It is a, a public meeting. Is it something we need to decide? Yes. Okay. Hi, sweetie. Uh, so um, what's not included, what, what is not yet included in the Crawford Park budget are um, uh, an expense should we come out of COVID, uh, the park would like to provide some community events for such as um, uh, uh, three concerts, um, movie, family movie nights, and another welcome home to Crawford uh, open house uh, for next year's holiday season. Um, so I would like to propose adding um, $2,300 for that. And in addition to that, we will be making a change to our um, event reservation software I'm actually, um, I did not have a chance to check what our current expense is for that. That may be a wash, um, but that's going to be $5,500 that I would propose to uh, add to the parks budget. Is there any objection? Jill, Pam? No, nope, I think it's a great okay. idea. <laughs> okay. And I would like you to get back to pre-COVID ways and actually celebrate and use the park. Wouldn't it be nice to get together in a group and appreciate some music? Oh, yeah. gosh. I mean, drive by Coco is something, Debbie, but it would be nice to. <laughs> <laughs> it's a start. I think since start. we're talking about it, I am going to venture um, that we should have an event sometime in June or July. Um, I think we need to talk to Rybrook as to whether they plan a Rybrook day. But I think we really should have some kind of a nice event planned if we can break out of this. And I'm, I'm really hoping with some federal guidance on, um, you know, on mask wearing combined with the advent of the vaccine that we're really going to hopefully get back to a normal summer. I don't personally foresee a normal spring. I hope that, that it gets towards normal. Certainly we're going to have a very difficult winter, but hopefully late spring and early summer we'll, we will have some semblance of normalcy. And I'd really like to start to plan some events in celebration of that. So let's keep that in mind for the, for the park staff and for the, and for the council to come up with ideas. Okay. All right. Let us um, start with, and I see Hope is connecting and Neva is here. All right, we interrupted you, Patty. No, oh, no, that's fine. Listen, uh, I'm at uh, your disposal tonight. I appreciate the invitation to be here in your budget work session. And I also wanted to thank uh, you and the uh, town council for bringing on um, my team on this project. It's, uh, it, it's something that we really enjoy working on. Um, just by way of background to let the council know, I have uh, worked in Westchester County over 25 years as a municipal manager or administrator. I was with the village of Mount Kisco just about six years and then Pleasantville for about 19. Uh, I retired a couple of years ago, created a small consulting practice uh, 
and I pick and choose the projects I'd like to work on. And, and this uh, in particular is one that I was really excited to be able to be called upon to assist in trying to help you collaborate on this consolidation effort with, with the justice courts. I was involved on the uh, SGR study team, uh, CGR study team, I'm sorry, back in uh, 2000, uh, the early part of uh, uh, 2020 that worked on the Port Chester dissolution study. So I had some background on the um, <clears throat> On the uh, on the matter, in particular, some of the fiscal impacts that were going to uh, occur. So, when I received a call from Debbie to uh, to assist with this, I uh, immediately tapped some subject matter experts that I've worked with over the years. In particular, Stephanie Tim Austin is with us tonight. Uh, she is uh, highly regarded and esteemed as a court clerk in Westchester County. Very well known. Thank to her you. Peers. No, thank you, Stephanie. We've worked together for several years and, and I'm happy to be able to work with her on this project. Uh, we also have the benefit of working with uh, Jackie Ricciardi out of Harrison. She'll be consulting on uh, some yeah. of the matters pertaining to the administration and the delegation of duties. But right now, Stephanie and I were uh, hard at work on trying to get our head around the operations with respect to the financial administration and the budget because we know time is of the essence for the town board to get this budget in order. So um, we started working uh, on the template that was provided to us uh, that had a, a really good, uh, I would say, structure to it. Um, and we added some things that we knew were necessary to address. And I think if you indulge me, I'll just pull it up on a screen share here and I'll walk through it on a line item basis and then we can go, we can take it from there. Okay, so let me uh, pull that up. So while you're pulling it up, Patty, um, we're gonna divide this. Uh, I just wanna remind you that we'll divide this conversation into uh, the public session, which is the, the entire organizational structure um, for, and okay. the budget for the corporate, for the, for the court, and then any specific salary conversations, we'll, go in, we'll, we'll do an executive session. Absolutely, I'm going to give you a high-level executive sum here, and then we could we could delve into some detail. Um, you know, this is a standard chart of accounts prescribed by the OSC. I'm sure the board is very familiar with how things get coded, and you may not have seen it in Excel form, but this is our working paper. So we'll just uh, we'll just work off of here. Um, but with all municipal budgets, uh, objects of expense are typically divided into three sections. You have your let me go back here, your personnel expenses, your personal services accounts that usually start in the codes of 1000. You'll have your contractual expenses, which are uh, which follow. And then you typically have equipment and other types of uh, fringes that fall in the back of the book. Now, what we were given to work with was uh, this column here, the preliminary budget. Um, and we were asked to take a hard look at it with respect to its sufficiency for what we would consider to be the consolidated court. There were recommendations and we have some as well, but we'll, we'll just walk through what the nuanced differences are here so we can talk to uh, what you've seen as your preliminary budget and what we're recommending you move forward with going into the new year. Now, before I do the line items, I just wanna qualify a couple of things. There's still obviously some things that are not uh, known, but in terms of a budget, you always want something uh, a budget to be at least responsive and then flexible enough to deal with things that will change as you know things do throughout the year. Uh, the supervisor mentioned the impact of COVID. That's a, that's a significant impact on court operations, on the operations of the law enforcement personnel in the field. Lots of things and, uh, have changed because of COVID, but uh, we were asked to uh, put together this picture for you with the understanding that COVID will eventually abate, the pandemic um, impacts will eventually resolve themselves and we'll be in, a, in an operational mode that, that for the most part is, is, is going to reflect the level of activity that this consolidated court would have. So our budget um, takes into effect, uh, takes into account operations, assuming that COVID has abated and that um, you know, we, are, we are in full swing. Okay, so one of the things that were put together, uh, at least uh, 
were put in front of us initially was an organizational um, chart that would have uh, that would have required four justices, four court clerks, and um, four part-time court assistants. What we did here in the personnel services is um, after consultation with um, Stephanie, Jackie, and others who have ad administered um, courts with this type of volume and with this type of um, activity, we put together an org chart that we think is, 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 is a good place to start. We're looking at two court clerks, two assistant court clerks, and um, two office assistant automated systems um, personnel, all of those being full-time. And we would also recommend three part-time clerks, uh, those titles we could talk to. They could be anything from cashiers to intermediate clerks or just clerks. But we do think there needs to be uh, um, people available to be able to deal with uh, the level of activity that this court would, would be seeing. In addition to that, uh, you do uh, have a need for court security officers right now. Uh, they're provided under contract through the, through the village but we're talking about bringing them up into um, the personal services line, meaning that they would be hired by the town as town employees and paid uh, through your payroll instead of through 1099 vouchers. So the personal services de deal with the, uh, with the uh, elected justices. There were four recommended in the preliminary budget. Um, I, I'm assuming that if the town wants to end up with four, it will probably be, uh, It'll probably be able to do so after some special legislation, but um, we're thinking in 2021, uh, it may be prudent to start with three. Um, and then um, you'll see going down to the contractual services, I'm sorry, the contractual expenses. Uh, these were recommended by the town. Uh, we, did, we did make some adjustments to the court reporting lines and um, the stenographer lines because those were one and the same, but essentially the overhead uh, for contractual expenses were increased by two things that you did not have in your preliminary budget. One being uh, some money forces in your general liability and law enforcement insurance policies. We are working with your insurer NIMER to try to come up with what we believe would be the anticipated increases in those premiums due to the level of activity. You would have to amend your crime policies um, and you would be picking up a law enforcement policy um, for, for the activities in the court. Also, the uniformed officer assigned to the court, that budget is being uh, expensed here in the contractual line. This is some arrangement that you'll have to have with the village of Porchester. So in order to have uniformed personnel in the uh, in the courtroom. And um, I can go over that budget estimate on how we got to that number, but it was based on the uh, the current rate of, of uh, pay that uh, and the minimum hours that are assigned to people who are working in the court. And what line is that? Uh, right now you'll see here line 35. Got it, okay, thank you. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Can I, can I ask some questions, please? Absolutely. All right. Um, I see that the court reporter line, you increased from 25 to 33.5. And then you said, because that's going to absorb the stenographer line. But the stenographer is at 24.5. If you add the two together, you the, get 48, <laughs> not 33.5. Yeah, Gary, the... Um... The town of Rye had um, bundled together the court reporter with our translator services. So we um, had to back, what we did for this budget is we backed out the, the town's translator expenses and we put it together with the village's translator expenses. And then we um, put the town's stenographer or court reporter expenses together with the village's stenographer and we all we we put that all into the same line because essentially they are the same function yes the, those numbers were provided to us we did not adjust these these were these were coming out of the town's assessment of 
their, uh, their, their current contracts and what it would take to provide those services. So um, right. there you, was some redundancy, but uh, I'm sorry, right. Super, go ahead. I got yeah? good enough explanation. Uh, okay. The difference between what, what are the qualifications of the court officers and their function under personnel services and the uh, uniformed officer assigned to the court. I assume the uniformed officer assigned to the court will be an off-duty uh, police officer, most likely from the village of Porchester. Uh, am I correct with that? Yes. Yeah, yeah, and so the, the, the part-time court officers come from where that we're going to hire? Those are the civilian uh, court officers um, who, who uh, work the magnetometer and uh, uh, they are currently employees of the Porchester Police Department. I think okay. there are five of them right now, Supervisor. There are five that share, um, that, that work around the calendars of the court. Uh, some do night and, court, some do And you day. said they're, they're employees of the, they're civilian? Yes. I've never seen a civilian. I've seen people in, in uniform. Are they not uniformed? They're, they're civilian uniformed officers, but they, they're not armed. Correct. They're yeah. not, and they're not police officers. Okay, they're like our park rangers. Yes. All right, but they're trained. I can't say that. They're, I they're, they're, they, are, they are civilian employees of the Porchester Police Department? Yes. Okay. Tony well, may have an idea. Right. They may be peace officers, I don't know. Who? No, they're not. I don't think they are. Um, I, 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 yeah, Judge Provenzano would know better, but I don't believe they are. But I, I do believe that they are. Uh, that that they are. Um, some of them have some background in law enforcement. They may actually be retired, retired from the sheriff's department and some other county departments. But we can get, you know, we can we can figure out uh, sure enough who they are. The goal here was to get the number budgeted. They were budgeted in your contractual expenses, if you can see. Uh, I just brought them up. Um, they were they were down in the contractual expenses because that's the way they were engaged uh, through uh, through. Prior. That's all right. So, right. So basically, we're we're starting off fresh, and we can interview. They will become employees of the town. So if they're current employees of the Porchester Police Department, that means that we can either interview them and take them on or we can take on new people. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And the, and the uniformed officer assigned to the court, do we have any control over that? That's entirely within the discretion of the Porchester Police Department, who they assign and when. Well, obviously when the court is in session. Well, currently, currently, what's happening uh, is uh, um, it's uh, off-duty officers sign up for the hours that Ann posts, and when she doesn't get enough people signing up, then uh, the the chief um, will will call people in off the street. Given this is town court, do we have the ability to approach both police? Departments? Yes. Uh, unfortunately, you can't. Oh. The primary what? jurisdiction, because the courthouse is in the village of Porchester, and the primary jurisdiction of the police officers is Porchester Police. All right. Thank All right. you for that explanation, Judge. That that I did not know. It would be, it was a funny situation. If there was a fight in my courtroom. I'd have to call the Porchester police and be prosecuted in the Porchester court, which happened. There was a fist fight in my court and it was handled in the Porchester court later on. But you won, right? <laughs> you won. Always win. Actually, someone stole money from the uh, court clerk. Oh, gosh. Wow. Uh, well, I, actually, from a window on a camera. It was an easy case. Even I could have I could have solved that. <laughs> That's good. All right. All right. All right. Hi, Lindsay. Hello. So, Supervisor, let, we'll, let the we'll record show that Council Member Lindsay Jackson is, in fact, present. I am. Nice, nice to meet you, Councilwoman. Hi. So, so we uh, we're just going through the line item budget to the extent there are questions. Just, just, just you know, please raise them. 
Um, but most of these contractual expenses were provided to us, uh, you know, based on the, uh, the work that was already done on the budget. Um, as I said, the things that we added in were general liability, law enforcement premiums. This estimate is based on the fact that when Porchester was uh, looking uh, to determine what it would be saving when a dissolution uh, would take place, they were advised by NIMER that they would save about $10,000 in premiums. So that's where we came up with that number, but we are, uh, Debbie and I are working with the agents right now to try to get uh, our pencils sharpened on that. Um, yeah, but you're not gonna have it sharpened before Tuesday. No, no way. No, all of these, you know, all of these numbers are, are, you know, very good estimates, but that's what they are. They're, they're good estimates. All right. Let uh, me go to yep, the personal ahead. services line. Sure. Um, you have court clerks for assistant court clerks. To, I mean, par pardon me. You have court clerks and assistant court clerks. The question that I have because I think we're still not going to be quite sure how the duties are going to be allocated. Mm -hmm. um, can we put in a line for court clerks and determine later that some should be assistants so that we have one gross line or? Absolutely. Yeah. This level of detail is really just for budgeting supervisor. You could just put in one gross line with, uh, you know, uh, an appropriation for salaries, you know, and, and all of the positions to be determined. That's fine. You could just do, you know, to be determined. Um, you know, the, the, the thing is, the, the goal at this point in time, since, you know, we are in the planning stages, is really just to make sure the budget gets to be as accurate as it can be. How you distribute, you know, the budget is, is still, you know, going to require some conversation with the justices and with staff. But at this point, you know, we want to be sure our numbers are good because when you go to the state controller's office and you make an appeal for transfer of function under the tax cap, you want to say, look, we just picked up another 1.1 million in expense here and we want our adjustments so you don't get hit over the head with your, with your tax cap levy. You know, you want to be sure you get a good number in. So, um, and I think that's, you know, that's probably something you've already thought, thought through. So to your question, yes. I mean, right now, you know, whether, you know, whether you budget for three justices, two clerks, two assistant clerks, all of that money, you know, as long as it's set aside, you know, we can have the conversation once you're in agreement on the organizational uh, chart, you know, how, how this should trickle down. But our, our recommendation is based on what we see as best practices in courts of this size. There are typically two court clerks, two assistant court clerks, and a host of staff with different titles. I chose office assistant automated systems because knowing Westchester County and knowing, knowing the talent pool, most people uh, in these professional office uh, positions uh, have that title. So when you go out and look for people, you know, and canvas for those jobs, you will have a pretty uh, deep talent pool, which is nice to know. You know, some of the other titles, they may, they may not even have eligible lists. You may have to deal with provisional appointments, um, you know, that gets a little difficult. And, you know, the, the goal here is to start the organization off with, you know, a good foundation and try to make sure that the people that you bring in are either permanently appointed already or can be permanently appointed pretty quickly or can be transferred in from other courts and have similar knowledge. So we don't have a big learning curve here. Uh, but anyway, office of system automated systems is where you're going to find lots of talent. Almost every community has those positions, uh, you know, in them in different offices. So that's why we went that route. Um, one of the things that um, I worked with uh, your staff on is coming up with what we believe to be the estimate of the fringe benefits. Payroll taxes are very easy. We just took our estimated personal services line and multiplied it by 7.65% to get your payroll taxes. Health insurance was based on the new numbers that came out from NIMR and my understanding that um, some of the employees pay 15%, uh, uh, some pay 25%. We're assuming all of the new hires would pay 25% in 
we made an assumption that uh, most of the new hires would be on an individual on a family plan not an individual plan and then we prorated those numbers for seven twelfths of the year because those people would be coming on in june so we did the same thing with dental and vision to try to get a good number there uh, new york state retirement system numbers are uh as well prorated that uh, that that is basically uh, the ERS system rate uh, for uh, tier four employees. And workers comp, that's another estimate that um, you know, we're waiting on NIMR. They won't be able to give us a, a figure on that until we know exactly what our payroll is going to be. Uh, but um, that's, that's a good estimate uh, based upon what we know the additional labor uh, will be for the department. And then two, two things need to be discussed, uh, if not more after this conversation, but these, these account codes should be reviewed because I'm not too confident on town account codes, but I believe these are, these are close to what they should be. And uh, I don't have contingency in here, but I'm assuming you have contingency in a 1900 line somewhere in the budget that you may want to increase maybe, I would say mm -hmm. anywhere from three to 5% of this number just to have some additional money in the budget. So anywhere from maybe 25 to maybe $40,000 more, just to, just to provide some cushion for your, for your um, portfolio. All right, I'm curious as to um, the timing of this. Mm -hmm. The Porchester Court is scheduled to be dissolved. Well, the judges are scheduled to have their terms end May 15th. Yes. The question that I have is what happens to our administrative personnel in terms of our, our clerks, our assistants, et cetera? When do they come on? When do they get trained? Do they need training? Um, I assume, and I'm not sure when, when their terms will end. In other words, the judges will not be operating, but they will still be employees of the village of Porchester, or we will get a, be getting new people from outside. So wouldn't it make sense to start our people on May 1st so that they could get trained into whatever systems we have rather than May 15th when, the, when, when our judges will become the judges for a much larger system and will they have trained support 15. We, we need to sit down and have that conversation. Uh, I, I do think that depending on how you're going to be staffing the consolidated court, if you're looking at uh, bringing people into the organization that are familiar with Port Chester's um, systems, that would be helpful. But I don't know that yet. But to your point, it, we don't know that we don't know that either, Patty. Yeah. And that's the problem. I am assuming that at least some people currently in the Porchester court system will become employees of the town system. I don't know that 100% will or not. That's okay. a conversation that um, we're going to have to start an interview process, and I think we need to start that sooner rather than later, right after the first of the year and get that straight. And Tony, how do you feel about it? Because I think, you know, you're, you, you and John are the judges right now, the only judges we have. So, you, you know, I want you to be involved in the, in the hiring process. Uh, they're gonna be working for you and with you. They're not gonna be working for Debbie and me, basically. So um, you're really gonna have to take the reins on this and uh, with John and figure out exactly how you want to approach this and when you want to interview people. Uh, I would say, you know, the sooner the better. I've been holding back because I'm still waiting on budgets. I, you really can't do anything now. I don't know what list, what class. I'm hearing now office assistant. At least I have some uh, concrete venues. I can look at those lists. I didn't have lists before. Uh, we've just gone to the two court clerks. So that frees up. One person doesn't have to be on a list at all. Uh, the assistant court clerks, but until the budget's locked in and we have salaries, how am I going to interview anybody? I don't know the benefit package of salary, but the answer is as soon as possible. Right. So the, 
how soon do you want to start paying them? I think we're going to have to start paying them in May. All right. Well, interview any time before then. You know, you know that's a that's a pretty good lag time from February, March to come work in May. Good time. You know, just to do the best we can. I, I have the same concerns you do. We have to hit the ground running, but <laughs> looks like you got to start running like the, you know through first base. You don't just get up to the day and run. And we got to start running from now. I'm comfortable with our timeline at this point. Um, we'll get the the budget agreed upon. Our organizational structure, um, the org chart, is something that the uh, consulting team is working on. At the same time, we're working on uh, job descriptions and figuring out who's who's going to do what. Patty's already got that map, starting to get that mapped out. All right, so that's um, the answer. Once I'm given that, then you can start interviewing. I think. Right? No, yeah, we, I don't know. We, we can canvas for the uh, for the competitive positions and uh, and identify which exempt positions we've got. Okay. Well, we don't my, have it yet. My question is. Uh, and go ahead, Lindsay. I'll go after you. No, I just, as far as the job descriptions, the judges are going to have input into that too, correct? The judges will have input into everything. Okay. I just wanted to make sure because that's a big part of, you know, the hiring process, et cetera, is the job description. What? Yes. Yeah, we're just su suggesting at a minimum, there needs to be six full time employees. At a minimum, courts of this size typically have seven to nine full time employees. So. <laughs> We're running this very lean in the first year. We're hoping that this hits the mark, knowing that we're still, as a supervisor mentioned, dealing probably with COVID the first half of the year and maybe some activity ramping up after the middle of the year next year. But I think if you get into 2022, you may actually see the need to hire an additional full-time person. Maybe, maybe we can do that by adjusting this budget and uh, dropping you know, uh, a part-timer or two. So, you know, there's room here to be flexible, but I think that uh, what we're recommending here to start is a very lean organization, given the, the activity we know that this court, you know, will eventually see. Do we, oh, sorry. The other question, I guess this is more of a logistical question. Do we know as far as ongoing trials, when those, are they expected to complete all ongoing trials before the court? So you'll be no. picking up trials midway. Correct. Oh, that'll be fun. <laughs> Challenging. That's life yeah. in the city, I guess, as they say. Yeah. So. The um, what I'm concerned about right now, looking at the projected uh, personnel, is whether we're going to have enough room to put them all. I mean, you're looking. You're looking at four part-time clerks, two office assistants, that's six people, and four clerks, that's 10 people. Okay. Now the part-timers are not gonna always work um, at the same time. I'm assuming that you're gonna have two part-timers uh, at a time. So that's still eight people. We don't have room for eight people right now. So um, that's going to have to be worked out and uh, discussions are being had. We went, we went to the, uh, we've discussed it with the village of Porchester and uh, are working out some space requirements. Uh, but I obviously have to discuss that further with them if we're going to stay in this building. And if we're not, then that's a whole other issue. So um, you know, and I think that we need to gain an understanding, Patty, of what the functions of the, the different clerks are and what the functions of the office assistants automated are and what the part-time clerks are going to be doing. Um, and I think that requires a lot of coordination between our existing judges and uh, current clerks as to who's going to be doing what. 
yes. and how many we're really going to need. And I think those discussions and conversations have to start virtually immediately. And um, my preference right now is to budget for what we can reasonably see as the maximum. The worst thing would be to say, we don't have enough people. And by the way, we don't have enough money to pay anybody else. Right, correct. I right, I'd rather, I'd rather be in a position of saying, we don't have enough people. And oh, by the way, we have money in this line that we already allocated so we can use it and hire someone. Um, that's my feeling. Um, I know that, that you are recommending three judges. Um, I'm not gonna get off the four judges. I think we need to budget for four. If in fact we only get three, then we'll reallocate it because obviously the, uh, the three judges will be getting more than what the two judges currently get. And the workload is not gonna change whether we have one judge or 12 judges, there's gonna be a workload and that they don't have any control over. And they're going to be there and they're going to be doing it. So I would like to budget for four judges and then we'll see what comes because uh, whatever we do this year, we're just going to be reviewing a year from now and making adjustments. Correct. So um, I, I don't want to, I don't want to be in a position that we cannot operate the court. So we have to allow for that. That is my view. And I would agree. I would rather be overstaffed in the beginning than understaffed. Yeah. Um, even if that, you're right, Lindsay. Now, even if we're not overstaffed, we could be understaffed in the beginning uh, as long as we have the ability to hire additional staff mm -hmm. when we discover that we're understaffed. I don't want to hire 10 people and then realize that we only need six and then have to fire someone, that's not right. right. I'd rather hire six and then say, if we need a seventh or an eighth, we have the budget to be able to accomplish that. So we could, we, what we can do is we can make sure that we do have a contingency available for that eventuality. Because as I said, I do think this is rather lean in terms of the administration here, not necessarily the judicial administration, but, but the office administration in full swing. The comparable courts um, of Harrison and Greenberg in terms of activity level, and you'll see that in that other report that we're working on, uh, would, would, would suggest that you would need at least seven full-time employees and part-time assistants to help. So we're, we're going to be more so efficient. I, I think you are. I, I, you know what, after we've had those walkthroughs and the discussions that we've been having about technology and making more use of uh, better scheduling, I think you will be. You know, and we can set a clean table here, which is nice. You know, we're setting our own, uh, we're setting our own table here. So I think there's an opportunity to be more efficient. But be that as it may, you know, there's still uh, there are still calendars to work around. And when so court in session, we, sure. when courts in session, you're going to have a lot of the staff working in the court, but you still have to have the offices open for day-to-day -day operations. So. You know, um, right now I understand that at least the court clerk and, and two full-time assistants are involved in court uh, matters when court is in session. Someone's dealing with the dispositions and other people are taking money at the window. And then there are people in the office still doing the regular day-to-day -day work and getting ready for the next calendar. So it's, um, it, it's very busy. And I think, you know, six full-time are gonna have their hands full, but um, we could start here. You know, uh, as you said, you don't want to overstaff and have to pull somebody back in. It's better to be able to build up. I would rather, Patty, I would rather mm -hmm. staff it the way you're suggesting with possibly, in my view, a slight overstaff, as long as we have money in the contingency to pick that up okay. so that we can operate efficiently. So um, I do want to budget. Mm -hmm. I definitely want to budget for four judges, though. Okay. So we'll, bu we'll budget for four judges. That'll, that'll adjust our fringes a bit. But I'll give those numbers. Uh, I'll work on those numbers with Debbie. We'll get the fringes adjusted. We'll add the extra justice, and we'll we'll budget um, a contingency 
in the event that there has to be another full-time person added to the, uh, you know, to, to the uh, roster here. Does it, uh, Dave, do you have a view about whether we should break out the various positions in the budget or just lump the administrative staff all into one line? Well, it's okay where it is as long as we have uh, support for, you know, the, the, the total number, what it's based on. In other words, which we do, we have the salary numbers because we also too, the new people, we're still budgeting the 712s for their salaries plus 712s of their benefits and other things like that. So I, I think it's fine like that. I agree with Gary to keep the, the four judges on there that gives us some flexibility. I think we may have to go in that way anyway. And, um, you know, we have 25,000 total contingency. So we may have to bump that up, um, you know, a lot more to, to cover. A new person would be, if not budget, it would be at 7 12 yeah, and I'm thinking if you add another staff member, probably a level like a cashier, you know, someone just to deal, you, you really don't need a lot of the technical expertise, but you definitely need some people with, uh, to deal with some of the- uh, Entry some level. Material work. Yeah, that's um, yeah. More of the, um, the lower level cler clerical work, yeah. This may be going off on a tangent, but I just, while it's in my head, I wanted to um, mention, or make the suggestion that, uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> no, I think that given these pre preliminary conversations what we're working on, I would ask that we revisit everything in August once we've um, sort of had our, gotten our feet wet to a certain extent to evaluate where we are and what we may or may not need moving forward. Um, I think I think the mid-year review is a really smart idea, and, yeah. and frankly, it's one month before we really start the budget work uh, new, which is perfect timing. Exactly. So we'll have you know a few months under our belt. We'll be starting the next you know 2022 budget process. So mm -hmm. just while it popped in my head, I figured I would mention it and kind of make that suggestion that we should look at everything moving forward. Um, you know, just kind of as a yeah, no, but Gary, one of the things you just mentioned is should we be hiring staff as of May 1st? That would be adding another month mm -hmm. to our calculation. I am aware of that, but you can put that in, into contingency. I'm just, I'm just concerned that on May 15th, the Poor Chester Village judges will be no more. And the, we don't know if we're gonna have two new judges at that time. And we don't know who our personnel will be. We're gonna be interviewing and obviously we're gonna to talk to the existing Poor Chester court personnel and we may be able to hire uh, many of them, and it might be a very seamless transition. But at what at what point? I mean, I think that these things are going to be have to be worked out. Uh, we've already had discussion with um, with the uh, Justice Court um, administrator. What's her title, uh, Tony Ariel's title? She's. Um, assistant to the administrative law judge right and and you know there are things that have have to be done in advance of the changeover for example renumbering the active porchester cases to rye town cases you don't want to do that on may 15th when somebody's coming into court you want to do that you want yeah, to set yeah, the this software yeah yeah, and who's, gonna, and, and who's going to do that if they're not a town employee? You know, they have their own job as as a Port Chester Village uh, clerk to handle those cases. You know, who's going to make those changeovers? I was I, I had the clear impression from the conversation with Ariel that that uh, OCA's IT people would be assisting us with the software for that. Yes. All right, Stephanie. I think you were on that too. Yes. 
Okay. Yeah, they will be assisting, but who's going to do the actual work? Will it be them? Will it be our clerks? Will they be taught how to do it? All of those, I'm just saying that to say everything is going to switch over, you're going to flip a switch from May 15th to May 16th. I don't know if it's going to work that way. To, to um, uh, use another analogy, dealing with COVID, you know, they say it's not going to flip a switch. It's, a, it's, it's going to be on a dimmer. I think Governor Cuomo used that analogy. It's going to, you know, things are opening up on a dimmer switch, not on all on or all off. So the question is, what tasks need to be done between May 1st, for example, and May 15th? What tasks can be done between May 15th and June 1st? I don't know the answer to that. I think Judge Provenzano probably has a better idea since he's in the court all the time. Um, and the clerk certainly will have an idea. So I would just want to make sure that during the budgeting process, if we need to hire people as of May 1, we have the ability to do that and it's in the budget. It might not be everybody. It might be two or three people. It might be two or three new people who are coming in uh, fresh from Require civil training and, yeah. and need training. And you're not going to have them jump into the fray May 15th without training. So you may want to hire them on May 1st or even well, May 1st. It, it's once you make the decision of, of who the, the people on there, we could just, instead of going with seven twelfths, we can go with eight twelfths to do, do the budget as of May 1st for the, the new, the new, um, the new hires from, from the court, you know, the Porchester court. So, and that's, that's, we can do that. Uh, so we don't have to keep increasing contingency more and more. Uh, All right. We can, yeah. All right. I, listen, not my job to tell you how to run the books. <laughs> so, that's your job. Yeah. My job is to, is to make sure that, that things are going to work, you know, from day one and right. figure out the best way to do that. The details I leave to you and Kathy uh, and, and now Patty to figure out what numbers go where and what lines. But I okay. just want to make sure that we are prepared for whatever comes. Fair enough. Well, wouldn't it be if you're saying that the Porchester courts are still in operation until what, May 15th? Wouldn't we need that's the plan. I anticipate, though, human nature being what it is, I think they're going to start phasing cases uh, in that May and start punting over. And nothing says the right town court has to be running at full steam on 515. I no, can have I our own version of a pause. I can adjust the calendars to give two weeks of no real court in court activity and give the clerks a chance to catch up, breathe a little bit. I would I would think so. I don't just have to force it. It'll be I like mean, if the building caught on fire. I'll, I'll just, well, with the other judge. And by the way, Judge Clangel couldn't sign on. Uh, he would have loved to have been on it, but his iPhone didn't work. Um, I, I'm sure we can accommodate the calendar and, uh, you know, certainly you not have any trial scheduled that week would be. I would, I, would, but Tony, I, would, I would think that that's exactly what would happen. I would think that the Porchester judges, knowing that they're going to be walking off the bench on May 15th, would probably seek uh, not to bring on a large caseload at that time and to possibly adjourn cases into June if they could so that uh, they could be rescheduled under the town court auspices. I would think all of those things. Uh, I just want to be prepared. I, you know, I'd leave it to your discretion and John's discretion as to how you want to do that. If you want to you know, close down the courthouse for a week or so, except for essential cases, you know, like criminal cases, arraignments, things like that, that you have to do. But for, for the traffic cases, for the parking cases, very demanding. building cases, that you can work that however you want. But wouldn't it also be prohibitive to have, I mean, we can't focus entirely on current Porchester staff because theoretically they'd be working with the Porchester courts until the 15th. I think we need to see their calendar uh, and find out when yeah. they are when they are effectively uh, 
closing operations down, yeah. maybe winding down in advance of that because yeah, and another, we adjourned and, you know. Uh, yeah, and another thing, if, if, if we're taking on any of the Port Chester personnel, um, we can hire them as of May 1st and they can, um, they can uh, retire from Port Chester as of, as of April 30th and start with us May 1st and get, get the, the wheels going. I mean, that's a way to, that's one way to do it. Well, yeah, the, we'll have to have a conversation with County Human Resources on that, but yes, they can, they can resign and be reinstated or they can resign and just be rehired. Um, they're not gonna be rehired, Patty. Yeah, no, I understand it's a new hire. They're gonna be, they're gonna be hired. Hired. not rehired yeah they're going to move from one job to the next correct and that's a that's a you know it, it really is you know from a point of view of transition it, you know fortunately things things can be very easy and smooth we just hope that we put the right people in the right places here and we'll, we have to have right. that conversation i think that we'll, we really should have a, a planning charrette on that sometime either later this week or early next week with the justices and with uh, with ann uh, and uh, Debbie, we should we should get that get that meeting done quickly. I mean, I'm not as familiar with the talent that's available at the Porchester Court than than the justices would be, and that Anne is also familiar with uh, with uh, you know the personnel there. So we should we should have that conversation, so we know right. what, what we're working now. Okay. Okay. Do we do we have guidance now as to where we're going with this budget? Yeah, I think what we're doing. I highlighted in yellow here things that will be amended with respect to the uh, recommended budget. We're going to add the fourth justice in the budget line. We're going to adjust the fringes accordingly. We're going to come up with a contingency number that uh, we're comfortable with, and I still need to get some information from Nimer, but I think you know we'll probably. Contingencies should be able to cover any other increases in that uh, insurance that we're not uh, we're not. Uh, Patty, you and, and Stephanie had had some had the view that we had not put enough uh, money into the budget for the um, support staff in the office. Do you want to speak to that? Are do, do the numbers you you have here represent what you believe are correct levels? You're talking about in terms of the contractual expenses? Uh, no, I'm talking about the support staff. The um, or do we want to talk about that in uh, an executive session? The office assistants, the assistant court clerks, etc. That, that was my question because I know the budget. I see, you know, that's public information. That number. Do do I know right now? what the court clerk salary budget is, the assistant court clerk, these office assistants. Somebody must have estimated some number because. Yeah. yeah. There are details, there are details behind that that we could talk to. Um, right now, these are these are budget estimates. So I think we probably should, you know, we, we could, um, you know. Patty, have you seen the numbers? Have I, I I've seen some of the suggested uh, numbers in the preliminary budget, but we, we took averages from what uh, similar courts with similar volume and transactional activity have been, um, uh, have been setting their salaries at. So okay. where's that reflected? Where's that reflected? Where is that in, in this budget? In the clerk's lines and the assistant court clerks and the uh, automated systems. So the, the, these amounts, for example. Column C. Okay. Oh, yes. I might not have the same. I have some detail here. It says uh, the court clerk, Tom Rye, has 75,000 addition of a deputy of 70. Is that what the salaries are? No, that's, not, well, that, that was in a preliminary budget. I think those. Okay. Well, what's in yours? Because you know what it is? I got old all of a sudden and the printout I have is very small. And I was embarrassed to get my magnifying glass, but now I have to do it. <laughs> and the print is small. I sound like my grandfather. The print is small. But what do you have for those salaries? And if you don't want to discuss it now, I'd like to have an idea in executive session of what they break out. To. Yeah, let's, yeah. Let's, let's talk it because then we're going to get to individual people. Okay. And get okay. So... Um, <clears throat> Is everybody satisfied? Because we're going to close the public hearing on these numbers. 
Yeah, the one number that I think is is not here and we don't have it yet is um, software is uh, IT support. Um, and I'm thinking that we should probably have some number in there um, just to make, or I guess, you know, honestly, we could probably take it out of contingency. Um, I don't know how much Sullivan would, uh, uh, would increase its cost um, for IT support. Um, what about, and what about software? Software comes from OCA. The money or the actual software? The actual software and, and OCA pays for it. What, what, who, I mean, if we're gonna be looking at software which is for parking and stuff, that's got to come out of OCA. We have to go through their bank. Well, the, the parking, um, the, uh, the the ticket collection line there. Yeah. Um, uh, currently, both the town and the village uh, work with Passport, um, and we've uh, just for a placeholder. We're expecting a proposal from Passport, but we've just ported over um, the combined cost for ticket collection, which includes the software. I would, I would make that number as generous as you want. But now does it, Rybrook does not use Passport, however. Well, we, we collect on Rybrook's behalf, so that it represents Rybrook in there. Okay. And also the county. Okay. Okay. Been illuminating. Thank you, Patty and Stephanie. Oh no, it's our pleasure. Look, uh, you know, we know this isn't uh, this isn't easy, and you know, considering, you know, the town's budget is, you know, is going to increase uh, substantially just by adding, you know, one departmental operating budget. It's uh, it's a lot to think about, and and as we said early on, we we we'd we'd like to. Um, We'd like to get it right out of the gate because it's important to have those numbers uh, available for the transfer of functions when we when we go to OSC. So um, I, I think the town's done a great job in understanding what what does lie ahead. I think that you know the architecture of this budget was was really well was it was well done, and um, you know, we just uh, we just picked on some things that we know you know are the nuanced overhead items and other things that really are. Are going to come up. Um, Judge, Judge, what's the library? Uh, what's the extent of the library? What do we have in there? Uh, good question. Where's uh, I have ten thousand in here. I'm I'm thinking. What do we have? I mean, the OCA provides the Westlaw. Uh, what do we, do we, I, I'd have to ask you to BC. I, I don't know if that's the um, the CLS supplements that we get. Stephanie, do you have any idea what that means? It's probably, she probably, it sounds like it's the law book subscription. Um, I mean, I've, I guess it depends on, that's something you can maybe talk to, about and think about. Uh, we sort of use, a, have, uh, in my court, we scale down on the law book subscription and we use, um, you know, some online services that are available, you know, that are free of charge. Uh, and the, you know, the West Law and Lexis Nexus that uh, OCA provides, our, my judge uses that. So we've only uh, probably use as not as many uh, law books as we used to on hand. We do like, keep some on hand because sometimes you, that is some help to do or go old school and sort of flip through when you're trying to research something. But uh, we have cut down on a lot of the books considerably, and that has reduced our budget. But it sounds like from looking at that, that sounds like the entire uh, CLS uh, no, subscription of all the books. Right, for the supplementals. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Tony? Yes. I think, I think you should look at that and make sure that um, you have online subscriptions to uh, with Westlaw and LexisNexis 
Um, you may or may not want to replace the, the hard books, but uh, maybe some of them. There are probably a lot of uh, hardcover books that you guys never even use. Yeah, you know, if, if I have to obviously speak to the other judge because everybody has their own technique. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm online. Uh, I don't really use the hard book. I, I, actually, the books they'll give you for free. It's the supplements they beat you up on. Yeah, it's a sup. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. But I do like some uh, manuals and things we get. Yeah. But uh, I guess I have to ask again. I'll look at the budget and see what we could yeah. take out, what we use. I don't think we're going to change the budget now based on that. But I think that, you well, know. Well, mid-year, you know, we have an obligation. I'm a taxpayer, too. I'm going to look at it. If it's, it's, if it's something we can live without, we can live without or use it somewhere I else. I, I got yeah. you. I, what, I, what, I, I'm I saying, you. What I'm saying is before we spend, we could leave the 10000 in the budget. But before we spend the $10,000, let us look into it and, you know, maybe we could save some money and be even more efficient by just going all online. Look, there are always some hardcover books you want to get. Yeah. Always some kind of manuals that you have. I mean, you know, even I keep, you know, the, the, the town law manual by my side. Uh, so, so, you know, there are always some that you want to keep in hardcover. We'll but to do up. research, to do research, I mean, it's useless to get the supplements because by the time the supplement comes in, it's it's been online for a week. Okay. I don't argue with you. I don't use it. Okay. I'm not the only judge. Okay, I know that. You could t you could talk to the other judge about it. Whatever you guys want to do. Well, I'll look at it. I'll discuss okay. it. Okay. All right. Well, the good news is I think you're in a lot better shape than you were a week ago with this budget. So we're we're getting there. We're getting there. And uh, we'll Patty, I I thoroughly agree with you, and I want to thank you and Stephanie for a remarkable body of work that you've pulled together very quickly for us. Thank you. Quite welcome. Yes, thank, thank you. you. This is very thank informative. You. Thank you. Well, let me go, let, let's have a motion to go into executive session, please. I'll make the motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, uh, in executive session, I think, um, the only one who doesn't who doesn't get to go in here is Victoria. Bye, Victoria. <laughs> <Good> Hi. <time. laughs>